you on that list? Yeah, please. Right. Right. These are just for the re retained no. bills, right? I've got it. Yeah. Don't need a balance.
uh, it, it's silent. But it seems to me that it's reasonable for us to have, if we're going to be begin to start taking up bills and reconsidering them without giving notice to anybody several weeks after we took final action, that that sets up a kind of, uh, makes me feel very uncomfortable. It makes me feel like we're not being transparent, not being accountable to the public. Well, evidently, after that, that meeting that you, you were talking about, there was some discussion about should, should we do that again? Because one of the members who had promised to vote in favor evidently changed his mind. Uh, that having been said, all the other bills that we worked on went over to the clerk's office. Senate Bill 66 did not, so it's still in committee. And when I inquired about it, it seems that we have the ability to reconsider our previous action because it's still in committee. It never went to the clerk's office. So it's a, it's a legal maneuver. I'm not happy with it. Would a motion be in order? I suspect none of us are real happy about it, but uh, we have it. If I might, Mr. Chair, whether any of us are, are happier or not about the, about this, I you know want to make a couple of observations. We we had a, a series, we had a number of public hearings. We had a very lengthy and I think pretty exhaustive conversation about the bill itself and whether or not we would change it. I think. People felt comfortable about retaining because everyone, you know, many people identified that there's some concerns, some some problems with the bill that might be appropriate for the committee as a whole to deal with in the, in the period we retained. We had already retained a companion bill that we've just established a subcommittee. And quite frankly, now we have new people. I see some new, welcome the new faces to the, to the committee for this, this particular day. But there are people who you're now being invited in to participate in a deliberation who didn't sit through any of the public hearings and didn't have the benefit of the deliberations. That I realize it's really a rule, but it just seems, you know, it's within the, you know, the, the discretion of, of the speaker and the chair. But it just seems to me that we, as, uh, as a responsibility to this committee and how it functions, what the culture of this committee is, we ought not just throw away customs so quickly. Well, we have some replacements. We have uh, established over that. And I welcome We have a replacement for Delmont, Larry Gagney, and Bonnie Hess. We don't have a replacement for Carolyn Gargas. She gave notice at 2.45 on Monday, so that would be less than 24 hours. So, we're going to burst. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I make a motion to Mr. Chairman, I wish to speak first before the motion. I've served on this committee for many, many years, and we've always been a committee that was bipartisan because we were dealing with things that dealt with not just Democrats and not just Republicans. And I feel very railroaded here today because I got a notice that 666 was not going to be on the calendar day. And now all of a sudden we're having reconsideration and everything else. I don't think that's fair to the public. And I don't care who says we should do it. We had that committee vote. It was very close. We, it was 20 to nothing that we retained it. And I would hope that you would give it a lot of thought before you go back doing that, because it takes a lot of faith out of this committee. Thank you. I, I understand that, Laura, and, and, and trust mm -hmm. me, I, I feel almost the same way as you do. And probably for the same reason. But we're here, and I recognize Representative Brett for a motion. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I make a motion to, uh, to take it off the table. Senate Bill 66. Uh, reconsider. Okay. Sorry, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. There was a second? Second.
have the motion to reconsider Senate Bill 66. Uh, and we just have already had this session on it. Um, I, may I say yeah. something? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Did we vote on the reconsideration? No, we're oh, I'm speaking pardon. against oh. reconsideration. Um, and I'm speaking against reconsideration because I hold each of you, my fellow representatives, in, um, in high regard. And it's a regard not born of friendship or geography or like-mindedness. But in this setting, you are my esteemed colleagues because you have been chosen by your voters to represent them. So it's incumbent upon me not only to represent my constituency, but to listen to you as the voice of your constituents. I need to engage with each of you, regardless of our friendship, regardless of our coming from the same area, and regardless of how we feel on the issues. We need to engage to make sure that we're reaching the best decisions and not being derelict in our duty to represent all of the people of this state. And it's the rules and the processes of this House that, have, that we've established in our House and in our committee that allow us to do to engage ably and with, uh, with respect. We, our full committee, including the people, and I would echo Representative Cushing, the people who sat through the public hearings, the people who received the emails, the people who had the phone calls, and the people who listened to the debate at the executive session. And also, I must say, the people who were aware that the vote to, ought to pass as amended, was a very close vote and not a strong vote. It was clear that we couldn't send it to the floor of the committee with a strong recommendation. So instead, we decided to retain it and work on it. We assumed that, we assumed at that point that we would be uh, engaging, you know, in an effort to seek consensus through analysis, through research, and, and possibly through compromise. Now, 14 days later, long after I thought the bill had gone to the clerk's office, with no public notice whatsoever, we're considering a very rare and unusual move that I, in my experience, to reconsider a bill in committee without any kind of notice ahead of time. You know, I'm really pleading with you, my honored colleagues, those whom I respect and trust throughout this process, to vote no on reconsideration. <laughs> Voting no on reconsideration is in no way a vote against the subject matter of SB 66. It in no way says, I don't recognize those issues as important. Voting against reconsideration says, I recognize those issues are important, and I need to address those issues in the best way possible to develop, and I've used this phrase before, but it's our job as legislators to develop a product for the state. And if we spend the right amount of time and have those difficult conversations and do our research, we can develop the best product for the state of New Hampshire and the people of this state. We can bring to the floor of the House with some certainty a strong recommendation in favor of the bill. It is not going to be strong. If we send it to this today, it will not, I, I can't see into the future as I, another thing I say frequently, but I assume that if we send this bill out today, it will not be with a strong recommendation. I would much rather we vote no on reconsideration and retain the bill. Effective, strong, and fair policies are the result of an adherence to good decision-making processes. And I think that reconsideration, reconsidering this bill today is not evidence of that kind of a policy. And I ask you, again, my colleagues, please vote no on reconsideration.
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I am correct, um, I am only in my fourth term, but regardless, you know, for the past history that I recall, uh, that this has been done uh, with bills that stay in committee. It's in accordance with the House rules. It's in accordance with uh, Mason's uh, rules. And, you know, as long as it doesn't go to the court, which this bill did not, uh, uh, yeah. you know, we, we can bring up bills like others have done in the past in other committees. Mm -hmm. And it's been done many times. So it's, this is not new. Sure. I just wanted to point that out, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yeah, Mr. Chairman, I agree with Brett Burton. I've been here 16 terms, and we've done it many, many times where the bill didn't leave the committee. It's in our possession, and we have a right to bring it up or not bring it up. We've always done that. It's been, there's no particular rule on it, but we've always done it in every committee that I've been on. And I, in fact, the last couple of weeks, I've served on other committees, and they brought two team bills up. They did the same thing that we're doing. So it's not unusual. So I agree with John and it's been done. All right. What about, thank you, Mr. Chairman. What about the public? Do we have any any regards to them whatsoever? They were a lot of them sitting here when they saw that we retained the bill. They thought they could come back and help, help us to make it a good bill. We all know that it's going to court the, right after it gets out of here. It gets signed by the government. Well, Representative Panelakis, this is the original plan was to pass Senate Bill 66 out to the floor, see what happens to it. That would give us some insight on how to amend the one that was kept in committee. That was, again, that was my opinion, but obviously not shared by everyone. So, we are here, we'll go. We'll, anyone else up here have a? No. It's been answered already, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I just, you know, with, with, with great respect for my brother here to my left, and for Representative Fields, on this committee, I don't have any immediate, I don't have any recollection of this particular committee taking a bill that it had voted to retain, and then two weeks after that, deciding to bring it up and to take other action of this area. And respectfully, Mr. Chair, um, while perhaps after the vote we took two weeks ago, you had conversations with somebody relative to whether or not they voted the way that they had told somebody else that they were going to vote or not, I also have the experience of people who voted against me, <coughs> who had voted opposite from me, who said that they actually thought it was a good idea that we had decided to retain it because they saw some problems with the bill and they had, a, had a, the opportunity of a nice exchange with that individual about what this committee had the possibility to do in the future. I think the reason, the impression that we retained it was because he, if we hadn't retained it, it would have been an inexperience of legislative vote. That would have been the motion we would have worked on. And I thought it was better to retain it than it would be to kill it. And again, yeah. respectfully, Mr. Chair, perhaps that's what, that was your opinion of what was going to take place. Well, I didn't share that. that. <laughs> <laughs> I, was not, I was not sure that that would have been the next motion that would have passed. But well, I've been chairman for a long time, and if you don't pass something, you're happy to kill it or retain it. Mm -hmm. and that's, have you ever been in the levy? Did you have a comment? Yeah, I did, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Um, I'm the new guy in the block here. I don't have 12 or 14 or how many terms we need. I'm here for the first few months. And this maneuvering here, I'm having a hard time to understand it. Uh, it sounds, and I, I mean this respectfully, but it sounds like somebody's trying to pull a funny one. Um, I, I'm sorry somebody voted the wrong way. But I also know, we're supposed to know what we're voting for, what the issue is, and how you vote. Now, just because somebody made a mistake, I'm sorry, but that doesn't mean, do we all go back to this same thing? If I made a mistake tomorrow, are we gonna recheck the bill? 
Um, and again, I respectfully suggest that the new members here, great, great people, I, great, great people, there's no doubt because I know one of them personally. And uh, they haven't heard all the, the drama that we've heard, the, the kindnesses, the disappointments, that this has come back year after year after year. Sorry. This has come back year after year, and it still keeps coming back. Why is that? Why? Why does it come back year after year after year? I don't think, and I don't know. I'm the new guy. But I don't know if anybody has actually studied this in detail so that we know whether 20 weeks is viable and somebody else says eight weeks is viable because that's what is comfortable. I mean, how do we determine that? And we're talking about life and we're talking about presenting a bill to our constituents on the floor, to the Senate, that represents people who have thought about this in depth and can step forward and say, hey, okay, this is a bill that we can either support or it's dead in the water, but at least we would have time to discuss it, listen to some of the stakeholders who want to help us do the bill and, and go forward after that. But, you know, this notice right away, I got a phone call with a few days ago, hey, we're going to do this. Why? I mean, we've already passed it. We've already decided that. Representative O'Leary, uh, yeah. now, being a new, new member, uh, I, you can't be expected to know how many years we've worked with this issue. And Laura has had it when she was chairman. Uh, she's been on the committee for a while. We've dealt with this many different times, many different ways. There's been mm -hmm. a lot of thought going over it. Um, if I may suggest. Yes, you may continue, mm -hmm. but I just didn't want you to. to no, I understand that this, no, I understand that this has been worked on many times over a long period of time by many, pe uh, many people. What is the one or two issues that have stopped it from passing each time? Now, I don't know what those issues are because I wasn't here. But if there's one, two, or three issues that have created this problem, why don't we look at those one, two, or three issues in detail to figure out what has been the stumbling point? And, I, and I, I don't know. I just don't want to sit and discuss something that people are going to say, oh, criminal justice, the dummies are doing this, that, and the next thing. I'd rather be up there and say, we did this, this is what we decided on, and leave it at that and take the vote afterwards then. It just doesn't Mr. have Chair, a, a nice, one comfortable of, feeling. One of the main issues is, is the question of liability of the two. This, this particular bill has 20 weeks. <laughs> the previous bill that had eight weeks and, and lesser amounts. This is part of the process. It's an incremental process. To find out what works. <laughs> if we don't send it out to the House, we won't know whether that would have worked or not. That's just my feeling on it. That's my opinion. But I, I think if we take the vote on reconsideration, if it passes, then we'll discuss it further. If it doesn't, then we'll have lunch and go home. Yeah. yeah. Mr. Chair? Um, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm new too, and um, I agree with what you said with one exception. I feel like we've tossed it around in committee, talked about all kinds of different things, and when we get, like, three or four of us get together, I don't think the opinions are going to change. I think everybody's really set in what they believe, and I think we need more than us 20, 21 people to make that decision for such a major bill as this. I think we should send it to the House, and that's just my opinion. And where it goes from there, if we lose it, it's not our fault. Oh, we still have one. Yeah, yeah I know, but still. What I'm hearing here with being told that we can't reconsider anymore. This has been going on, I've been here for quite a few years, quite a few years. And we have reconsidered on many bills with yeah, this committee. And I've been on this committee for a long time. 
So it's nothing unusual. The bill has been held back. It has been turned in. And we came back many a times to reconsider and to vote. This is a very important issue. I'd like to point out it is an important issue. But it's uh, important to both sides on this issue. And it should be given the opportunity to reconsider if you choose to move with that motion. I've heard all kinds of things that nobody's here to be playing games, we're here to vote, and we do represent our constituents, I'd like to point out. That's number one. It's, it's been a rule, that, uh, not my rule, but not a house rule, but every time we vote, 100% <coughs> of the constituents are served. If you vote yes or no, you're making somebody happy and somebody unhappy. Absolutely, That's the Mr. Way it goes. Chair. So I agree. We're ready to uh, vote on reconsideration. Uh, the clerk will call the roll. Representative Saparato. Yes. Representative well, myself, yes. Representative Holzel. Yes. Representative Burt. Yes. Representative Fesch. Yes. Representative uh, Green. Yes. Representative, uh, oh, she's not here, right? She's absent. All right. Representative Matthews? Yes. Pardon? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Representative Manali? Yes. Representative Testament? Yes. Representative Wallace? Yes. Representative Shanley? No. Representative Panalakis? No. Representative Barubi? Yes. Representative Cushion? No. Representative Rod? No. Representative Heath? No. Representative Murray? No. Representative O'Leary? No. <laughs> okay. Representative Opper? Opper Opp Opp <laughs> no. no. Okay. Okay. And the chair? Yes. Okay. Twelve to twelve eight. Is that right? Get from the stand. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, do we have to amend? Yes, I'd like to bring an amendment forward, if I may. And it's amendment 2017-1360H. Uh, and if I may speak on my amendment at some point. This is the same amendment that we did before. According to the clerk's office, we have to re-amend. Mr. Chairman? Mr. Yes. Yeah. I also have an amendment. When would that be the option? All right. Um, and Mr. Chair, I think that we will, I'm going to ask if the Democrats would probably like to caucus for a few minutes. Can we listen to the, I'd like, what I'd like to do is hear about the amendment from Representative Burt and then caucus after that if that works for you. And then? We'll Just hear it before we vote on the amendment, but caucus after we've heard what Representative Burt right. has to say. We can do the same. Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. We're short about four copies. Back. Oh, well, we got one coming up. I have an extra one right here. Yeah, we have three. That's the one coming up. We got plenty of them. We got forty five dollars. Do you have your coffee, Laura? Yes, I do. Okay. We have our coffee too. Okay. Well, I don't need them right now, but okay. just yeah. I just okay, want to make sure we got you. Thank you. Seconded the. Uh, did you, you made a motion to amend. Who yeah, seconded? I don't know who seconded. Second. Well, uh, well, well. Not well. Thank, you. You Thank you, Mr. Chairman. What my amendment does is it was requested by the Senate. 
because there's an exemption for women that wish to have an abortion. And the issue is, is that it is only, that exemption is only in RSA 630-1-A. That is in the homicide statutes. What my amendment does is there's three other statutes that also pertain to murder, and the Senate feels that it would still protect the woman that wishes to have an abortion, because this is not an abortion bill, or anti-abortion bill, um, that this would protect that said woman in RSA 630 colon 2, 3, and 4. And that's basically what it is, it's just protections. The last time this was brought, two weeks ago, it passed by 21 to 0. And, you know, for the protections of the women that wish to have an abortion, I hope the vote would remain the same. Talk on the bill later. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Want to have a caucus? Yes, bill? yes. Can we caucus for? Um, I think ten minutes. Can we say? You know, give us. Well, we'll take us a couple of minutes to. Where should we? Can we caucus in the office, or do you want us? You can go to the office or any any committee room. It's empty. It's empty. All right, we'll go across the hall, and we'll return by um, twelve twenty-five. Does that sound reasonable? All right, we will uh, recess this executive session until 12.25. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, the Democrats are going to be practicing. The Republicans will practice on the main event. Okay, we'll bring the executive session back into the work session. We have an amendment. Uh, 1568. Same amendment that we had passed once before. I assume you're ready for the, for the vote. Let's go call the roll. Mr. Saparato? Yes. Myself, yes. Representative Tash? Yes. Representative Halsell? Yes. Representative Burke? Yes. Representative Green? Yes. Representative, uh, Representative Matthews? Yes. Representative Manali? Yes. Representative Tessman? Yes. Representative Wallace? Yes. Representative Shanley? Yes. Representative Panalakis? Yes. Representative Baruby? Yes. Representative Cushing? Yes. Representative Rod? Yes. Representative Heath? Yes. Representative Murray? Yes. Representative O'Leary? Yes. And Representative Opperbeck? Yes. How do you say that? Opperbeck. Opperbeck? Opperbeck. Okay, close enough. Thank you. <laughs> 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 yes. Uh, one zip. One zip. Motion carries. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to offer Amendment 1961H. And I'd like to speak to my motion. Do we have a copy of it? Yes, we do. Oh, we have, oh. Can I have the number again, Russ? It's uh, 196. One H. Thank you. And we're passing out the. That has to go. That one has to go to. Oops. Yeah, those two have to go to the clerk. These call me. Thank you. Any more copies of it? Go ahead. I don't know. Did we have enough copies? We had 20 copies. Do we have enough copies to go down there? Yeah, we do. <laughs> Did I have a second in my amendment? Who seconded my amendment? I'll second it. I'm going to bring you the rules for the motion. That's quite a game. Oh. 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 Oh.
from a sad manslaughter. Manslaughter, which causes a miscarriage or stillborn, defined in RSA 631, colon 1 and 2, will get a term of not more than 60 years. Uh, the second one it puts it under ne negligent homicide, and that a person convicted of a class B felony neglected homicide, which causes a miscarriage or stillborn, defined in 63 colon 31 colon 1 and 2, shall be punished by imprisonment for a term of more, not more than 14 years. That's the enhanced penalties, and that now is, would if we amended this bill to put them on, this is what would happen if a child was killed in an accident and they found him guilty of. Then, Mr. Chair. Any further discussion? Um, yeah. Thank you. Um, One of the things that happened when um, the enhanced penalty statute was created, uh, it, it was when enhanced penalties were applied to the statute, it was only applied to assault statute. And that was a mistake. Um, I, I, you know, in my opinion, with deference to those who did that work, I think it was an oversight to not include enhanced penalties under the manslaughter and negligent homicide and homicide statutes. And I think the reasoning was, is that if a person were being tried for, well, I, I, I'm not going to assume what the reasoning was, but what this does is say, if a person commits murder or negligent homicide or manslaughter, that person will be guilty and is found guilty of the murder of the individual who is murdered. If that woman is pregnant, then that per the, the perpetrator will also be subject to enhanced penalties, which are quite severe. And I do think that this addresses the, the meat of the problem that was identified in SB 66. I think that people felt that when um, a person is charged with murder of a pregnant woman, and we heard different cases referred to, including the case of the driver who intentionally drove into uh, the car carrying the, the couple in which, and the woman was pregnant, that there were, there were only, the, the person was charged with two homicides. Well, this bill would, this amendment would allow that person to also receive the person if found guilty to receive enhanced penalties that because death the death of a pregnant woman resulted and I think that that is really a good answer to the problems that come up before us that are addressed in SB 66 and it also and this is what I think is really important is it um, it recognizes the integrity of our New Hampshire law. And we do not want to get into the messy, unfortunate uh, situation of assigning personhood to a fetus, assigning personhood to someone who has not yet been born. Um, and that is not, you know, I'm not discussing the ethical or the moral or any other, the issue from any other vantage point except the legal vantage point. And the legal vantage point is we cannot recognize as born a person who has not yet been born. What we can do is make sure that anyone who would commit murder or kill accident, uh, negligently or through manslaughter, a pregnant woman, that that person would in fact be seriously and soundly punished. So I ask you to vote yes on this amendment, and thank you. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I've got the bills in various states here, uh, 39 states that uh, 
have some form of a fetal homicide bill. 29 of them do it at <coughs> inception. They clearly assign personhood uh, to a fetus, to a baby uh, at that age. I am sort of flabbergasted that you think New Hampshire is different than the majority of the states. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I think one of the benefits of the Pantelakis Amendment is that it puts the emphasis on the crime. And it seems to me that our focus here should be on the crime um, and punishment for the crime. You talk about the other states that have this, and they do, but there have been, as we talked about a couple weeks ago, real problems with some of those. those and I can, be happy, to re I can oh. be happy to um, go over those again, um, but the more recent one that I just read, um, is that in South Carolina, the first one to pass this law, one man has been um, arrested for assaulting a pregnant woman. 300 women, pregnant women, have been arrested because some judge thought they weren't doing their due diligence as a pregnant woman. And that's the problem with the, these sorts of where you're ascribing personhood, where you have real instances where the, the um, unborn is set against the mother. And these are women, if anyone in the society needs to be protected, it's pregnant women. And I think we need to put that emphasis on protecting the woman and um, not putting the woman in a situation where she's at risk, which a lot of these do, and instead put the emphasis on the actual crime, where the pregnant woman is dead and has lost the baby as well. Um, it seems dangerous. And, you know, we, we, there are so many of the examples where all it takes is one misguided judge to misinterpret the law, and that can happen here. I'm sure in South Carolina and California and Iowa and Indiana, they all said, well, this can't happen here. And it did happen there time and time again. And all it takes is that one misguided judge, and I think that the amendment focuses where it should be on the crime. Thank you, Mr. Chair. On line 26, uh, effective date, I'd like to see that change to uh, when it's signed into law. Line 26. Page 2. Page 2. On the You can't really do that. Uh, evidently, you need another amendment. Certain, certain bills deal uh, with what they uh, are dealing with have to be enacted on January 1st. That's when they put out the new law book. Okay. And I think this would fall under that. But Democrats have called a caucus. I think the Republicans need to caucus Could too I? to focus on this. Yes, we're, we're going to find yeah. a caucus. Through the years, I've always wanted to find something that we could do for these people. Because it's very hurtful to see somebody come in here and show pictures of their babies that they lost and nobody paid a penalty for it. And we're sitting here wondering why they didn't. There's laws on the books. So I think this enhanced penalty would give them that opportunity, and they could push the issue if someone was not um, arrested like they should be. I, I don't know how these things occur that nobody gets arrested, because I don't blame them people who be, for being upset of losing the child. But I believe that amendment will cover it in, in all ways. So I hope we get it passed. Yeah, I, I, Thank you. Sir. Um, I think there is goodwill in this committee to arrive at a solution. And I think it's unfortunate about the um, taking away our ability to retain the bill and do the research, because I genuinely believe that working together, we can come to something to accommodate what Laura's talking about, or Representative Pantelakis, um, <laughs> talking about in terms of these horrible situations where a pregnant woman dies. Uh, but I do believe there's goodwill. We could do it if we put our minds to it. And it's unfortunate we lost one opportunity to do that. Well, I think we will go into a recess. The Republicans will go across the aisle. We'll talk it. We'll bring these over. We shall return at 10 10 Well, one. Five of one. Okay. Okay. That Back in session. We have a, an, an amendment that would stand on its own as a bill. I think it's, it's, a, it's a separate measure.
measure is pretty good. The, the problem that I see with it is that it erases everything in the Senate bill, which is already agreed upon by the Senate. And it's unlikely, well, I think if this was a separate bill, I would probably postpone it. I think given the situation, are we ready to vote? I can say one thing. I hope we would consider this. I think you said. Right. If you are in favor of amending Senate Bill 66 with Amendment 1961H, indicate so by saying aye. If you are opposed, nay, clerk will call the roll. Representative Saparato? No. Yourself? No. Representative Dash? No. Representative Halsell? No. Uh, no. No. Thank you. Uh, Representative Burke? No. Representative Green? No. Representative uh, Matthews? No. Representative Manelli? No. Representative Testament? Yeah. No. No. Thank you. No. Representative Wallace? No. Representative uh, Shanley? Yes. Okay. Representative Panelakis? Yes. Representative Ruby? No. Representative Cushion? Yes. Representative Broad? Yes. Representative uh, E? Yes. Representative Murray? Yes. Representative Leary? Yes. Representative Offerbeck? Yes. And the chair? No. There will be a minority recording. Oh. Oh. Little ahead of myself. <laughs> Right. Okay. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Yeah. I'd like to make a motion about the pass. Second amended. As amended. As amended. Okay, second. Second and field.
We have to do it today because the deadline is wrong. <laughs> Are we going to discuss bills that we want to concur on? Sorry, I can't hear you. Are we going to discuss the bills that we want to concur with the Senate on? Like House Bill 640. House Bill what? 640. That's the marijuana bill? Yes. We're going to concur with that. Thank you. Yes, all they did is they changed I, the, the amount from one out to three quarters of an yes. hour. But what he said is, is the committee going to vote on it? Yes. We're going to concur with that. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I want to make sure that we're going to concur with it on Thursday. Absolutely. I was kind of hoping it would happen. The last time. I understand. I just want to make sure that the committee yes. knows that we're concurring with it on Thursday. All right. Thank you. You, you want to do that. Yeah. 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 Yeah.